All right, let's go this time. We're really going to do it. I think I think we've got it down this time. So I scheduled it through Streamlabs. It was up. I posted that on Twitter. When I went live, I didn't go live through the schedule. So it popped a new live stream, the one that wasn't scheduled. Messed it all up. Blame me. I don't know. Blame my age. Whatever. I don't know. I don't care. But if you're here right now, I appreciate it. If you check it out later, appreciate that too. Just trying to see how viable it is to do a live stream. Me to do a live stream. I'm not very well known. Artist, comic book artist, indie artist. So, I just don't get the play. Right? People don't come. People don't want I, So, I have to be more interesting during the stream and that's what i'm learning to do or at least trying to and we'll see how that goes today i'm just going to test my levels audio levels if anybody comes in that's fantastic that would be a bonus unfortunately if nobody's here i'll still try to talk to myself and entertain myself i guess or if any, anybody might uh, come in, want to chit-chat about anything, I'm talking about anything, and I do mean anything. I have lots of interest. I used to be in the video game industry, so I love video games. I have another channel where I record videos of me playing video games or, you know, like a Diablo 4 beta. I was streaming some of that. Um, I'm not a mid-maxer, <clears throat> so I'm not... I'm not looking to do, you know, speed runs on anything. So, that's somebody in my kitchen over there. So, but, you talk about comic books, indie comic books, crowdfunding, movies, whatever. Whatever anybody wants to talk about, so. You know, let's get started. I'll, I'll doodle a little bit while we're doing this. All right. If anybody wants to know, I use Clip Studio Paint to do most of my artwork. I also use Affinity uh, Photo and Affinity, uh, Affinity Designer which is an alternative to Photoshop, which is a lot cheaper than Photoshop is in Adobe. So that's one of the reasons. So here I've just got a blank, a uh, blank document where I just doodle around. This, this particular one is labeled Battle Max because I draw, I like to draw a lot of Battletech stuff, a lot of, mecca stuff so i have one file where i just do a lot of doodles in so this is what we're going to do today i'm just gonna gonna mess around in here i'm gonna pop a new i'm gonna pop a new uh layer and just draw so what do I want to talk about? Well, let's see. Moving the mic a lot just so I can make sure it can be heard, but what's a good topic to talk about? There's like nothing interesting going on, right? In the world of Twitter or the real world or it's all pretty much boring, isn't it? No, nah, there's plenty. Let me get a sip of my beverage here. Cocoa. This is not cocoa. Well, 
Uh, let's see. I can always start off with my extremely hot takes and unsolicited opinions of crowdfunding. If you all don't know, I attempted a crowdfunder back in 2018. The la latter part of November and the first part of December of 2018. And let's just say I didn't meet my goal. Now, I probably had 800 followers on Twitter. I was trying to build a rapport with other indie creators on, on Twitter. Met a lot of good people on there. A lot of people went on to be very successful in their crowdfunding. Unfortunately, at that time, I wasn't. A lot of people said, well, you shouldn't have held it right before Christmas. And you should have done this, and you should have done that. And go start a YouTube channel and get 100,000 followers, and then you'll be successful, which I agree with. I think you would. You've already got that following built in. So that helps quite a bit. Unfortunately, I didn't have that, so it didn't happen for me. Now, does that make crowdfunding a bad thing? No, no, obviously not. In 2023, actually in 2018, 2019, the ability to indie, to develop independent comics has become... I'm going to use this word, but um, I'm going to use it with a caveat. It's become easy, or easier than it used to be. When we developed comics, when you did small press back in the 1980s, early 1990s, you didn't have the internet to connect with potential distributors or potential customers like you do now. And now you can do those things. Well, and I say minimal effort, but that's not what I mean. I don't mean minimal effort. It still takes effort. But what I mean is you're not having to handwrite snail mail to distributors. You're not having to, you know, put out big ads in the, what was it? C CGB, I think. Uh, no, not CGB. Uh, comic comic book guide CBG uh, it was like a it was like a newspaper that came out quarterly or maybe it came out monthly I'm, I'm not so sure not so sure anymore it's been a while and you know you spend money and put out a full page ad and hey this is coming up and that was mainly to to tell potential customers but more so to tell retailers hey, this book is coming out, look for it in your distributor pack. Back then, there were a lot more distributors than just Diamond. There was Glenwood, there was um, Glenwood Distributors, Diamond, uh, Multibook and Periodical in Canada. Um, there's another big one here in the U.S. I just can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But there were three or four big distributors in the U.S. for comic books. And a lot of those um, retailers dealt with those distributors. So the retailers would usually subscribe to the CBG and then they would, you know, check out any small press that might be coming out that, that would look interesting. Back then, there was a lot of, a lot of independent or I keep saying small press because that's what I'm used to. And that's what they called it back then small press books blackthorn publishing i don't know if you ever heard of a book called uh elf quest by richard and Win and wendy penny uh that was small press um the hernandez brothers with love and rockets that was small press uh, if you ever watched a little movie with uh, brandon lee in it called the crow that was based on a small press comic book called the crow um, I can't remember the creator now. Oh my God. I can't believe it's slipping my mind. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, small press. Um, man, there were so many. There were so many. And I believe even not so much small press, but more 
indie publishers back then were things like uh, Kitchen Sink Press, um, Malibu. Um, God, there's so many. But it was a much difficult, there was a much more difficult road to hoe to get into the ind independent comic book publishing business or, or develop and publish your own comic. And today it's, it's a lot easier. It is. You still have to do the work, obviously, but it's a lot easier. And if you don't want to print, and if you just want to do digital, there is, um, you know, Global Comics. Uh, there used to be um, Comixology. But I think Amazon kind of killed that. I'm not sure, though. I haven't checked in a while. But um, And then there's others out there, too. I, I can't even name them all. Um, well, you could just, you know, publish. Oh, well, there's another one uh, that has to do with, like, drive through drive through RPG, drive through War Games. There's drive through Comics, if you go check it out. And you can self-publish on there, too, in digital distribution. And... I believe they might even have print-on-demand service uh, if people want to get a comic in print, and if the publisher of that comic offers that through that uh, through that vehicle. So, I'm saying if you want to, I guess the bottom line is we start talking about crowdfunding. Is crowdfunding is another option? Um, Crowdfunding has been around a while. Um, I remember when I used to only see video games on there, independent video de uh, video game developers trying to use it to, you know, raise money for funding of whatever project they're working on. So a lot of games got their start on there. Some A lot of MMO games got their start on there. Raising the money, doing this, doing that. You know, if you ever heard of Star Citizen, I think they had a Kickstarter early on, and then they went to, you know, just fund them through their website. You know, by buying a lot of <laughs> chips or or whatever. Um, and so they raised a lot of money on there as well. And then comic books, I think comic books, graphic novels, or whatever, have been on there a while. And the it's been successful for some. It hasn't been successful for others. And some that ha that's been successful for just just haven't been able to deliver on you know what what their campaign was. And so crowdfunding can be hit or miss, not only for the person backing a potential project, but for the person whose campaign it is, right? If you go in and, you, and you're not prepared for what you need to do, then I think it could be a potential hazard, right? But if you know that, hey, this campaign is gonna take a month and a half, I've got this long, I've got the project pretty much complete, at least 90% complete. It's ready to go. Once I get the funding, I can go to the printer, get it printed, ship it out. The backers are happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. I can move on to the next one and develop a rapport with your newfound customers and readers and, you know, build on that. Now, what I see in crowdfunding as of late, it's, I mean, honestly, I can't, on most of them, I, I just can't back because the value for me, for me personally, sometimes it's just not there, all right? You're, you're talking over, you know, you're talking over $20 for, for a floppy or a perfect bound graphic novel all right with 44 to 80 pages in it all right if people enjoy the creator that's doing it and 
that's their value in it. And if they think it's worth that, you know, more power to you. Right. And if you're making that kind of money on the platform, doing it this way with this business model, man, two thumbs up. All right. Go get it. Go get your money. Right. Go produce your book. But for for some people, it has nothing to do with who it is or what it is. It's just a value thing. It's a money thing. And maybe some people would say, well, you know, maybe you just don't like comics that much. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm not willing to, you know, fork over that kind of money for, for a comic book. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, it's quite obvious that I'm not willing to do that. So is it because I, I just don't? don't love comic books as much as, you know, somebody that would do that. I don't know. I like comic books. I've, it's, <clears throat> I've been either in the industry or outside looking in the industry with, you know, um, jealousy, I don't know, <laughs> um, for a long time. So, to say I don't like it, I don't I don't think would be a truthful statement, but you know, my opinion on crowdfunding is if you could do it, I mean you know, go for it. Go for it. I how sustainable it is, I don't know. It's been people have been succeeding at it now for years. At least four years. So I also think a lot of it has to depend on or depends on who you are. Um, do you have a following already? Um, be that Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, do I think you need to have a successful YouTube channel in order to sell comic books? No, I don't think that at all. Um, does it help? Yeah, certainly, certainly helps, um, because it's all about the exposure, right? Who knows who you are? How many people know who you are? Do they support you? Are they willing to fork over that money to help you succeed at your endeavor? So crowdfunding to me is, um, a minefield and if you can maneuver that you can be successful for sure no doubt do i think there's other ways to do it besides that i think there are it just depends on what your level what your definition of success is um do you want to get rich making comic books well you might not be able to do that in the short term, doing digital distribution of your comic. Um, I'm sure you've heard the plenty of people's opinions about, well, you know, I don't like digital comics because it doesn't have that feel. I can't, let me see here. I think I can pull something out here. Let me see if I can pull out a something anything i have lots here i kind of wanted to pull out an indie so that you can you can see that i do back indie comic books on occasion well how about the grandfather of all what got a lot of people started let me see if you can see this hold on i'll go full screen hold on There we go. There you go. You see that? Okay. So I'm not all talk. I do back. All right. <clears throat> so even though I do. Yeah, that's, that's a topic for another day. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So people like to have that book in their hand, right? Read it, 
bag it, board it, put it away, have it for posterity later or as a collector's item. And I understand that completely. I, I, I was that way. As a matter of fact, I still am in that way in certain certain books, right? Certain things. I have a couple long boxes full of books I just could not get rid of after I moved down here to Texas. I used to live in Kansas. And I got rid of a lot of them. But I kept a couple long boxes of books. Because I like them. I have... Um, I have Billy Tucci's title in there. Um, I have... Um, I have The Pit. I have full, uh, from number one to number ten. I have some old... Some old New Mutants. I have... Some Iron Man's. I definitely have some Conan's. Hell, I got some Conan's. I like Conan so much that uh, Conan's one of my favorite uh, all-time works of fiction. Robert E. Howard stuff, and then later some of the Marvel stuff. Uh, John Buscema is one of my heroes as far as, as, far as comics go. And you can see I've got the digested Conan, uh, Frost Giant's daughter here, a uh, bunch of different artists, but one of my favorite Conan artists is in here, Carrie Nord. Um, so, I get it. I like the physical copies too. I do. Um, but, that doesn't preclude people from buying digital comics, and that doesn't mean that people who only produce digital comics are going to fail or not be successful. And like I said, it only really depends on what, what your definition of, of success is. Are you gather, are, are you gaining a readership? Are people liking your, your stories, your art? Are people returning and buying the next, uh, the next iteration of your story? Um, a lot of people might consider that successful. Now, if you can't pay your rent, and you can't uh, buy food, then you might not be too successful at it. Maybe you have to do something else to uh, supplement your 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 common creation income, right? So I guess overall, my thought on crowdfunding is if it works for you go for it i mean it's just like anything else right if it works for you go for it is it sustainable maybe maybe for some people it is for some creators for others i don't know um a lot of people Well, a lot of people like to cite a couple big creators in the indie sphere as See, this is this. It can be successful. Look, look how success, uh, successful it is. And I'm like, yes, but they both have huge followings, okay? And people are going to buy their book now. When they continue to buy their book, then obviously, hey, it's a good book. People want to buy it, and they're going to do so. But I know that, like Eric July, takes a lot of shit sometimes from people who don't like him about. Uh, why'd you have to crowdfund or whatever? He didn't really crowdfund. <laughs> the book was done. Okay, the book the book like shipped out within what thirty days or something. It was finished. He didn't need to have people. Basically, what he was offering was a pre order. And if you ever looked at the book or read the book, you'll see that it's it's you know it's pretty good. You know, it's a superhero book, and so you know. People can succeed at doing crowdfunding. And like with, with Eric, I, crowdfunding is a loose term because he didn't, like I said, he didn't really need the crowd to fund his book, his pre-order. He had it ready to go. He spent a lot of money to make sure that uh, it was ready to go. So he, uh, hold on, I've got something going on here. So what happened? This is what happens when you stream on a Saturday in your house. People are home. So 
Anyways, I don't spend too much time on there. I've already spent a lot of time on there. What probably 15 minutes talking about that. Crowdfunding. Yeah, it's a viable way to produce a book. All I'm trying to say is be prepared. Don't go start a crowdfunding campaign if your book's not ready, or at least the majority of it's not ready. And you won't be able to deliver when you say you're going to deliver because all that's going to do is harm you, harm your brand, and harm any future prospects you have for that, for your, for you personally, or for any projects. So just keep that in mind. So, so I, I can see I haven't really done much doodling here. I'm just for just messing around here. trying to do something while I talk excuse me very difficult <laughs> I don't know why I find it difficult to talk while I'm trying to draw or vice versa I don't know I'm no Bob Ross that's for sure happy little cheekbone oh look at here this little whisker's lonely we're we gonna give him a little Lip, yeah, little bottom lip, right? So, this might be, um, I don't know, I don't know what I can do here. I don't do know what I do here. Looks kind of goofy, right? If I flip it around, I bet it's all jacked up. Look at that head. Head's something else. Crazy. Let's look at the structure. Side of the head. This is big here. Big, big, big. That's the center. Oops. This would be the middle of the head. And this would be where the eyes go. The ear here. Jaw. Jaw. Up. Right here. Eyeballs. Nose. So as you can see. It is. Not. I don't even think my construction lines are right, to tell you the truth. Oh, man. <laughs> so if you watch this later, what do you use to draw with? Are you digital? Are you traditional? I can do traditional as well. It's just that I can do things quicker digitally. But if you do... If you do draw digitally, do most of your work digitally, what do you use? Use Photoshop, use Sketchbook Pro, use Clip Studio, uh, Sci, uh, there's a bunch of others. Use a mouse, do you use a tablet, drawing tablet? Um, boy, I can tell you what, I got people talking, big time. You know what? I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. I'm back. I had to take care of some stuff. That's what happens. I'm going to tell you. So let's go back to the drawing board here. And let's totally obliterate this drawing. It's horrible. Flip it back. Oops. Wrong there. Flip it back to what it was. Blank. And I don't know. What else can we try to draw? I'm just messing around, doodling, so. If we do this, I don't know if the other artists do this. Maybe they're just much better at it than I am, but when I get something down like this, obviously I'm going for a female here. And just trying to get basic structure in there. And then I'll flip it, and of course it's leaning, right? I'm right-handed. That tends to be what happens to me when I'm drawing, when I'm drawing things. I always have to flip it multiple times just to make sure it's not too bad. This one's actually not that bad. Uh, sometimes it gets way off, but... Then we'll have to come in here and make a few corrections. Get the base. Get the base working here. The nose. The mouth's going to go here. The mouth, the corners of the mouth, usually line up. A rule of thumb. Not, not everything's going to be the same. Not every human being looks the same. So, but... General rule of thumb, corners of the mouth line up with the jaw, bend in the jaw, lower jaw. The nose usually lines up with the bottom of the ear, usually, not all the time. And then the eyes, right? The eye line is usually at the top of the ear, close to the top of the ear, something like that. And I'm going to go in and draw some rough. Get some rough hairstyles, usually. I don't know. Sometimes I'll have to go take a quick look at some real life hairstyles of women and men, but women mostly. When I'm drawing women, just so that everything doesn't look like the, the same thing. I often wonder too. I notice pot, what's pot, what's been popular over the last couple of years has been women with undercuts. Now I don't know <laughs> if that's some weird cultural identification thing or what, or if it's just like when when you're drawing the hair. I mean that's pretty simple hairstyle to draw, right? But it gets old. Doesn't fit every. Every character you're drawing. Um, so. Don't see a lot of drawings come out anymore with uh, women with long, long hair. So. Let me look over here. See if I can't find. A... Ah, uh, you know what? It's not. I'm not going to waste your time doing that. I had a specific goal in mind when I started this stream. Of pretty much just testing out what I've got going on here. Set up in Streamlabs. How it's going to sound, what it's going to look like. And I'm really not trying to accomplish a drawing here, a finished drawing, so...
Let's just see if I can slap something on here. Real quick. Hairline's probably going to be something like this. Cheekbones be in here. So I'm just going to draw something here. I don't know why it popped in my head right now, but I guess it was Lucy Lawless's birthday yesterday or the day before. I like her. I don't know her personally, but uh, Battlestar Galactica, Xena the Warrior Princess, uh, Spartacus, is that what it was called? The HBO. Of the gladiators in Rome. That was pretty good. She was in that. Then I would go in here and kind of rough out where the eyes were going to go. Probably flip it. Try to get a good indicator here. All that's going to be. Yeah, something like that. Eyebrows will go up here, depending on what kind you want. Put her eyes in. This might not be. I might have to redo that. So then I like about Clip Studios, if you hit the C key with the pencil or whatever drawing tool you have, it'll just do, it'll do transparent. So it's kind of like an eraser. So that, that helps. Let's see if I can. Get some form of eyeballs in here. The nose can always be a little tricky for me, for females, for the ladies, because with the dudes, you can draw pretty much a big old busted nose or whatever. It's all going to fit, you know what I mean? But for the ladies, you gotta, you know, it's got to be delicate, it's got to look nice. And you can tell right now, you can see this right now, his mouth is crooked as fuck. It's not good. It's not good. So, we go in here. Like that real quick. No, I drew that on here. See if I can get something a little better going on here. That's a little better, I think. A little better. Well, um, I could continue. I've been going almost an hour, but uh, I think this is good enough for a test stream. 
And if you happen to check this out later, that's exactly what this was, a test stream. If you made it all the way through the whole 50 minutes and you make it to this part, I appreciate you at least checking it out. If you don't like it, at least you checked it out, and I appreciate that. But if this is something that you think you might enjoy sitting an hour or two, or sitting about an hour and just talking about random stuff while I doodle. Let me know in the comments or on my Twitter uh, at Art Club Bruce. Um, if it's totally not interesting to you, let me know too. Or at least I know, right? So I've been trying to come up with things I could do on my channel as an artist. I'm also a gamer, so maybe people would rather watch game me play a game. I don't know. If so, you can check out my other channel, which is uh, called Ranza Rock, um, where I actually do just play games on there, stream games, or I put videos up of me playing different kind of games. So, for whatever reason you might be here, I appreciate it. And um, if you ever want to, you know, Leave me a message or whatever. Do that on Twitter. And I guess I'm going to end the stream now. And uh, I will see you around. I'll at least see you around on Twitter. And stop by and say hey. And I really appreciate it. And thanks for joining me. All right. So have a good one. Peace out. Until next time. All right. Mm -hmm.